Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, Tony Leggett. T tell us uh, what you know about the areas that have been affected so far. Uh, good morning. Uh, the earthquake was recorded at around 10 minutes to 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just to the south of Samoa, in this area here. Um, it has um, already been reported uh, on our sea level gauges in that area as uh, a wave um, of around 80 centimetres um, at the coast and is expected to affect other Pacific Island nations, including the north coast of New Zealand, in the next few hours. What? Looking at the energy... Sorry? No, um, no go on. Uh, looking at the energy map of the uh, tsunami, this is from our modelling. We would expect that most of the energy will move away from Australia. There will be some small amount of energy heading back towards Australia. However, it is not expected to cause any threat to life or property on the Australian mainland. Which islands or areas do you understand that that energy impact, those waves, have already affected? Uh, the Samoa, uh, Rarotonga. Um, it's probably not going to get down to Fiji for another half hour or so. Um, it, it's going to take roughly three hours from the start of the earthquake, so perhaps another half hour before it reaches the north coast of New Zealand. Um, any uh, other effects further afield um, will be of the order of six hours to reach the far north um, Pacific, so um, it'll spread fairly quickly towards the north. But does the e energy intensify or does it decrease as it, as it moves further away from the epicentre? Uh, the energy definitely decreases, however, as you can see from the, the modelled output, uh, most of the energy is in fact beamed in a particular focused direction, in mm. this case towards the east and west. So most of the affected areas are in fact unpopulated areas. The energy towards the north will in fact be less than as towards the east or west. We're reading some reports of extensive damage having taken place uh, in uh, American Samoa. Is that your understanding yes. too? That's correct. That ties in with what our modelling is saying. American Samoa is very close to the, uh, uh, the earthquake and uh, so the model predictions are uh, fairly sound at this stage. Is that the closest island to the earthquake, American Samoa? Uh, well, Apia itself yes. is the, the capital of Samoa. That's closer and uh, Pago Pago is in fact um, just a little bit further towards the northeast. Now, do you know about the nature of the warnings that would have been issued from, uh, from your body, from your organisation to those islands? Um, Australian Tsunami Warning Centre only issues uh, warnings for the Australian mainland and territories. Uh, for those offshore, for those islands in the Pacific area, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Centre in Hawaii is responsible for that and they are um, issuing watches and warnings for most of those Pacific islands. You say that the wave that was initially generated was 80 centimetres. To most yes. of us lay people uh, that sounds uh, very little indeed, but what's yes. the real impact of that? Um, it's not a typical uh, wave that you'd experience down the beach, uh, Virginia. The wave would have quite substantial momentum and would hit with, with tremendous force. And um, as you can tell from the news reports, uh, it would cause quite extensive damage to uh, beachside uh, uh, facilities and anyone who was close to the beach would be in extreme danger. So then what sort of height and strength of wave are you anticipating will hit New Zealand? Um, I would imagine much less than what's hit Arpia. Um, the American indications are they're around um, half a metre or less, so um, it's, it's far less uh, damaging in that region. We're hearing reports that, that around New Zealand the, uh, the tsunami alert has gone out and people are trying to get to higher ground. So by your estimations, how, how high will that wave hit when it comes to the coastline of New Zealand? Uh, that's a very difficult uh, question to answer, I'm afraid. Um, when a wave like a tsunami reaches a bay, as you'd expect to find in the north coast of uh, uh, the North Island, uh, the waves can amplify quite dramatically or they can in fact be uh, reduced in intensity. So um, I would, I would emphasise that people should move away from the coast in those areas if that's what uh, they're advising. Tony Leggett, thank you so much for all that information this morning. Thank you. Can, can I just say something about the mainland of Australia? Yes, of course. Um, if I just go back to the energy map uh, for a second, um, it, it's, unlikely that the, uh, it's unlikely that the energy would come across the mainland Australia and cause any significant damage. However, from around 10am, I would expect the, the New South Wales and southern Queensland coast to experience some unusual sea level rises and currents. So people should be aware of that if they're in the water. So that could actually change the nature of the currents around those areas? 
Uh, yes, that's right, it could. Um, it's going to occur for several hours this, uh, today, so probably straddling 10 a.m. through to mid-afternoon. So I'd be very cautious if I was going in the water. At this stage, it doesn't warrant a warning for those areas. Mm -hmm. as, as I said, most of the energy is moving away, but it certainly will be measurable on our gauges. If you're experienced and comfortable in the sea, if you're a surfer or someone who had a boat, would they be waves that actually could cause you some problems? Uh, no, it's more likely to be people who are standing on the immediate beachfront or if you're on a jetty. Um, sudden sea level rises can cause um, people to get disoriented and fall in the water or yep. get knocked off their feet. But if you're in the water on a surfboard, it'd be unlikely to cause a problem if you're an experienced surfer. Tony Leggett, really good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.